What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. Before I get started, I want to thank each and every one of you. Incredible end to last month. Amazing start to this month. I'm sure you guys understand these are massive months for YouTubers in terms of ad revenue. So it's not just the views. It's the likes. It's the shares. It's the comments. It's everything. Means the world to me. Can't thank you enough for your support. Now, to get into this recap of really just Chantal being angry and eating. I mean, it's almost... A daily thing now. Seven seconds into this live stream, she's taking a bite. And she says, you know, this was her ceiling day. So understand what most people would perceive as a day off. I'm going to go get fast food. I'm going to go to the mall. I'm going to enjoy my day. To Chantal, that is hard work. That is something that requires a full rest day. And I think that speaks to the decline of her mobility. Less than three minutes into this, she's going to get her food. It's substop. In less than five minutes, she's eating again. She's got fries. She's got dips. She's mocking Sansa. And, you know, she claims she's not had this in, quote, forever. Chantal, I have never looked at a food and you and said, I bet it's been forever since she's had that. Julia apparently has went back to the vet and everything is fine. Everything's healing perfectly. And I suppose it should be if Julia's went back to the vet for four separate follow-ups in seven days. She jokes that she has a bonus sandwich ready to go. In reality, she just ordered a large. She cut it in half or had him wrap it in half and thought she was going to come online and be coy and pretend like she was only going to have half a sandwich. It doesn't last. She eats the sandwich, not even satisfied because she wants to talk about Red Lobster. I will say that Chad is getting on her about the food choices, and she pushes back and saying, you know, it's just doing life stuff now, that she's never going to diet again, that it's just lifestyle changes. And some people bring up, you know, the talk of lifestyle change is part of the cycle. And she said that she's only going to start sharing now when real progress has been made. She is talking about the interview and the entire, you know, NBC, and Amberlynn Reed. This is just insane to me. You know, whether or not NBC went to Jordy or went to Amber, talk about it when it's over. Who cares? You know, the fact that in both cases, with Amber and Chantal, they act as if it's the reaction channels that need relevance. It's the reaction channels that need to be accepted. You know, I mentioned on my community post, you know, last week a documentary was done or released really through A&E and Amazon. I was a part of the documentary. I didn't say anything about it when it happened. I didn't say anything about it when I went through the process. I didn't care. You know, I was once given a great bit of advice. Act like you've been there before. And for Amber and for Chantal, whenever they claim that there's going to be this media coverage, they never act like they've been there before. They act like this is a massive deal that needs to be spoke about. Not everything in your life needs to be brought online. Not everything needs to be brought on for you to be championed. And of course, this quickly switches to Julia being fine, going to the vet next week, how this girl world cruise would require tons of security, and how she would ruin the plumbing just to get revenge on everyone. Chantal, we know you would ruin that plumbing to make Sulla happy and get him excited. She is feeding Julia now whenever Julia is hungry, so no one should worry. And she says, you know, she forgot to, quote, stock up the fridge, so she has to drink warm sodas. She starts to talk about Syria, but admits, quote, she doesn't understand even when Salah tries to explain it. And that's why so many people got on her about the posts, about the attire. And she sits there even today and says, well, it impacts my heart because that's where, you know, some of Salah's family is. And the chat calls her out on this and says, what do you mean his family's there? And she says, oh, oh, his extended family. She feels like she is addicted to Diet Coke. She wants to try other sodas to see if they're as good. She's upset she forgot to order cookies from Substop. She goes into this 25-year-old story about how a co-worker baked cookies, brought them into work, and she loved them. If this doesn't tell you that all memories are food memories, I don't know what will. She shows Julia the chat is angry that Julia isn't wearing a cone, and Chantal said she doesn't need it anymore. Everything's all healed up. Despite just days ago, Sala telling her that Julia needs the cone for 10 days, here we are. 36 minutes in, she wants to know what she's going to make for dinner. And as far as Salah, well, he's gaming. You know, he might be in later to play the keyboard. She says, you know, at least he's not out clubbing. And she plans on getting back to the treadmill tomorrow. She goes over the hardies that she went to. 
And she says, you know, she drove around a bit and then went to the Hardys, didn't realize that it was blocks away from where they lived. And she says, you know, the fact that people brought up the Hardys and how close it is to where she lived is proof that no one else has a life. So just to be clear, she can make two videos about driving at 40 years old. She can then drive blocks away from her house, apparently unaware, and make a live stream about it. But everyone else has no life. And she wishes people would try this in Kuwait so we could all be arrested. She regrets even showing the Hardys. I, I think the reality is she didn't expect anyone to figure out where the Hardys was. But now that we have, you know, everyone else is miserable. Because we don't drive to a Hardys and talk about food constantly. Why, why are we all miserable? I mean, 50 minutes into this, she's talking about Aisha. And the only response she has now is just cancel her. And, and what's crazy is, you know, I don't watch a lot of other reactors, but me personally, I have no idea what's going on with Aisha in these community posts. I just don't care. It's amazing to me that Foodie had no issue taking money from Aisha. You know, Chantal loves to tell the story is, oh, you know, they didn't see anything wrong with me until they left. They didn't have a problem while they were Beezers. Now they have problems. Chantal, you are literally saying the same thing about yourself. You had no problems taking money from this horrid person that can't be trusted. It's literally the same argument that you are making that can be made to you. It's amazing to me that Chantal just refuses to acknowledge her actions are weird. She talked about driving for a full day. She went live from the car at a Hardee's. And then she pretended like it was this long and grueling travel, even to where today she's saying she needs a day of recovery. You know, this is something that honestly, she is using to help grow interest in her channel. The, the whole, I'm driving in Kuwait now. And yeah, you know, when people find out that you only want a few blocks, it, people are going to say it's weird. Chantal, it's weird you can't even not embellish driving to get fast food. You know, she talks about how hair and food grosses her out. She pulled a hair out of her food in Thailand and kept eating. We've seen this. And of course, Bad Seed now is getting her wrath, and she is going to be reporting her channel. She had never seen it before now. She goes on about her eyebrows and how she must be crazy. She only thinks of Chantal. She's never grown as a person. She needs to find a nickname for her, but then can't. And she said she's not going to make it a secret. She's taking her channel down. No one has a career other than perfectly imperfect. She says that this is why it's not good to share your life online. And that she deletes her community post because she doesn't want her channel to be impacted the same way she sees reaction channels being impacted. Chantal, you can delete whatever you want. YouTube still has access to it. And of course, all of this is going to be done through the FBI. Chantal, I, I don't know what FBI you're calling. I'm assuming, I'm assuming it's, you know, Fudge Brownie Inspector, right? But the FBI is not going to care. You're in a different country than the people you're going after. And they're not even from the country that you originate from. And she tries this whole, you know, I never say anything nasty. I just say things in self-defense. Everyone else is just clout chasers who want easy money. And that no one has the concept of right or wrong and no one else can be happy. She has no idea how Yaba can have a happy family. And you know what this proves? This just proves to me, and really for everyone else, that Chantal doesn't know how to separate YouTube from real life. Because she is dependent on living her life online, even down to simply just going to get food. She must look out at a landscape of reaction channels and realize we can separate going online from the real world. We aren't the ones filming routine things and posting them online. It's Chantal that needs to film going to the mall. It's Chantal that needs to live stream unpacking groceries. It's Chantal that needs to promote for two days she's going to get fast food. You know, to anyone else, I mean, it's just part of our day. But Chantal truly has lived a life online. And I think in a way, a lot of the arguments that she creates show that she hates it because she's stuck. She looks out at reaction channels. She looks at Yava. She looks at FFG. She looks at Bad Seed and she sees, hey, these people are getting more views than me and they're not dependent on doing the same things I am. 
In FFG and Yaba's case, they don't even show their face. Yet Chantal literally has to micromanage every aspect of her day into a lens. And she tries to transition all of this and Yab is going to jail and justice is going to be swift and going over her marital status and then saying she doesn't have to. You know, the chat tells her if Chantal stops streaming, apparently we would all lose our, quote, careers. And she said she knows, but she, she doesn't know why she just doesn't do it. Well, I know, Chantal. I'll let you in a little secret of why you can't. Because you're more dependent on this than anyone else. You can sit there on your smashed horse all that you want, but the numbers don't lie. She says yesterday was a really bad day for her. She ate a whole jar of pickles. She's talking to Bally about lawyers in the chat. And Chantel says all she needs to do is show a lawyer our pages and it would be case closed. And that everyone is just digging a legal hole. And she's done speaking about it. She's going to start acting on it. And then she backtracks and says, well, you know, none of this is illegal. It would just be a civil case. And she says, you know, her YouTube manager, well, they're useless because they never do what she wants. No, Chantal, they don't do what you want. There is a big difference. And the chat tells her, listen, you're just feeding the fire. Focus on something else. Try Vlogmas. She can't. Instead, she has to sit there and just say, hey, I've got more of a life than anyone. Talks about kissing her hamster, cleaning her fridge. Then says today, you know, all the things she had to eat. Chicken, rice, soup, greens, pickles, subs, chips. They ask her about Salah's ever-changing work schedule. And she says now he works in the evenings. He doesn't have a 9-to-5 job like so many people do. And she closes out with her favorite burger toppings and how much she loves the Whopper. Of course, she screams sit and spin to anyone sniping her and then also shares her love for Hamburger Helper. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that's 90 minutes of eating and anger in just over 12. Top comments from the last video. Appreciate each and every one of you. All of support. Hopefully, it continues through next week because you know I'll be back soon as I can with more commentary.